Hi, look who dropped by the lab. None other than Jack Gansel. Good day, Jack. Hey, Dave. Great to finally meet you. <laughs> yes. I mean, this is really, really nice. What are you, what are you doing here in Sydney? I'm actually, I was doing a seminar in Sydney, yep. a public seminar. We had about 40 people show up. And other than that, my wife and I are just sort of tripping the light fantastic, going out. Fantastic. So a bunch of the city, we're he headed out to the Blue Mountains. And yes, after this? After this, going to uh, New Zealand. Um, oh, doing some more seminars up. there. Yep. And then uh, via Hawaii, it's a uh, horrible stop in Hawaii. I mean, it's tough. Yeah, no, it's tough. That's yeah, back to the real yep. world. Yep. It'll be back to <clears throat> December in Maryland, which is winter. So, right. Yeah. Got it. And if you don't know Jack, I'll link in his stuff down below, but embedded legend guru. <laughs> six books. I mean, you've done six books. You've done... If you think I've done a lot of videos, Jack's how many blog posts have you done on embedded stuff? Uh, like about nine, 900. So oh, 900. Far. Yeah. Right. Yeah, a so, lot. Yep. And, yep. Um, so you're beating me. Six, six books, but uh, then yep. also a book on sailing. That, oh, that's okay, much, right. much more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah. And so mostly on embedded stuff, though? That's Mostly on embedded. Yeah. You know, I've spent my whole career in, in electronics. Tell us. How how did you get started? I was the quintessential dweeb when I was a kid. Join the club. You know, I yep. built I built a, a radio, crystal radio with the oatmeal box with a wire wrapped around yeah, it when yeah. I was about seven or eight. Yep. And my dad was a mechanical engineer in a space program. So uh, I always had access to some amount of mm. uh, technology and got interested in electronics and ham radio and all that stuff in high school. Tried to design computers in high school, but I had no idea. Right. Uh, program counters and stuff. Yep. But um, got a job as a technician in high school, electronics tech. And mm -hmm. um, when I was in college, the place where I was working decided they needed to be in the microprocessor business. And that was when the first 8 bidder came out, the 8008. And no one knew anything about computers, so they yep. promoted me to engineer. And <laughs> I've been Fantastic. doing it for 40 some years since then. So you started on the 8008. Yeah. Oh my God, what an <laughs> awful part. But <laughs> I mean, we had so much fun with it. <laughs> you know, it had a, had a, had a yeah, hardware yeah. stack. Yep. Seven deep. Wow. If you call yep, yep. too many or push too many, that stack would blow and life was over at that point. <laughs> and people forget, back then, the 8008 was a little 18 pin dip. Yeah, yeah. But it took an entire circuit board worth of glue logic, just not including to, the memory. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just to make it work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It was incredibly. Uh, two phase clock, yep. three power supplies. Yep. I mean, it's, it's it was nuts. We have it so much. I would say we have it so much easier today, except that. The right. parts are getting really complicated. Man, yeah. I mean, like the uh, the ARM Cortex parts, yes. wonderful parts, but whew, there's some complex peripherals on those. Right. So that's a, well, we'll get into packaging and stuff yeah. like that, no doubt. But what was the first micro you worked on? Because that must have been a big deal, right? Like like everything in one chip. You No, no glue logic, no external memory, no nothing. When the 8048 came out, probably that was around 1976 or so. We got involved with the 8048. That was a mask ROM, though, wasn't it? Uh, it was originally, but there was an 8748. It was yep. the uh, e, uh, EEPROM version. Oh, so okay, yes. And uh, for, for development, you wouldn't use those in production, would you? Would you use you know, an EEPROM? You know, the thing is surprising. We for, things have changed so much. We did use them in production. They cost, yeah. a, they cost a ton of money. Nobody cared. Right, because it did a job it, nothing else could nothing do. Nothing else could do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, a, a, um, you could buy a mini computer, but a mini computer... Yep. was maybe 5K, mm -hmm. in, which is probably closer to like 40K in today's dollars. Yeah. I mean, or you could buy an 8748 for a few hundred dollars for the chip, which was cheap. You know, the um, 8000, or I remember when the 8080 came out, just the the chip was $400 yep. in 75. That was like 1700 Seventy five. yeah, yeah, yeah. 1700 today. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ouch. I mean, and now you can buy these yeah. arm parts for 50 yep. cents in volume. Um, so, yeah, people didn't care about price. You know, memory, jeez. Those old 1702 yes. EEPROMs. Yes. I, f I forget we paid it. They were like 50 bucks a piece back mm -hmm. then. 256 bytes of memory. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did the the 6502 must have changed a lot because it, it famously just slashed by price by an order of magnitude, like 20 bucks, wasn't it? Well, what happened was the um, uh, uh, Motorola came out with the 65. That's, or, yep. I'm sorry, 6800. 6, that's right. And then um, Moss Technology came yep. out with the 65 uh, or 6501. One, that's right. For yep. 20 bucks. Yeah. And uh, everyone freaked because processors were costing hundreds of dollars. Yeah. And I bought one. I was living in a VW microbus. <laughs> I was trying to save money to buy a boat. 
and I was coming back into the country from this little podunk main town. Yeah. And I had this thing in the glove compartment, shoulder length hair. And of course they strip searched me and the van and they pulled this out. What's this, kid? It's a computer. Oh yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh brilliant. <laughs> but uh, hang on. Yeah. The camera is collapsing. <laughs> Look at that. It's a leaning tower pizza. It is leaning tower. <laughs> Nothing you can't fix with a bit of electrical tape. I tell you, that and duct tape keeps duct the world tape, together. Yep, yep, exactly. Sometimes yeah. so I've got a, a bottle of Never Seize in one hand and uh, you know, <laughs> the, the Seize on the other. I'm not sure which one to use. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to cut that out or simply leave it in. Just for a little spice. Oh. But that what? wasn't the first time I got busted by the cops for having computers. So Do tell. In 71, I was uh, just graduated from high school, yeah. and a friend of mine and I hitchhiked up to Boston, which was 500 miles away, mm. to an electronic surplus store. I mean, as, as you do. As you do. As you do. Who and, was that? Uh, my friend Gary Sumner, whom I still right. keep in touch with. And we were uh, hitchhiking back. I got caught on a New Jersey turnpike hitchhiking, and a third time, they took us in the, the jail, strip searches. I had a core memory. <laughs> <laughs> this is 71 before yeah, the microprocessor right. existed. Right. What's this, kid? It's a memory out of a computer. Right. right. <laughs> I right. still have it. I still have the core. Because <laughs> that's only something NASA had back then. It was like, oh, you know, man. it was rocket science. It was yeah. literally rocket science. And when you think how difficult it was to use core memory, with the, what, yep. the engineers were, were so clever to be able to design the drive electronics yeah, to actually yeah, yeah. sense those uh, that low sense voltages. It, exactly coming back from yeah. that, yeah. Yeah. The, the electronic. Oh. And today, you throw a million transistors at anything. Yep. Back then, yep. you, know, you had to be very conservative. Yeah. Very frugal, yeah. Very, very. Oh, unbelievable. So, uh, what are the biggest major advances in embedded over the years, do you think? I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, you are. And I think... The well, I, I would think that the microprocessor would be one. Uh, sorry, the microcontroller all in one would be one. The microcontroller, but let's also think about what a microprocessor really is. A microprocessor, more than anything else, translates instead of building a lot of electronics, mm. allows us to use a lot of memory in order to implement complex things. And one of the big advances, I think, has been everything in, in memory flash, flash, yep, cheap memory. E squared prom for before flash. E squared prom, but E squared was never very big. We never really got much with E squared. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. but it, it, it enabled a lot of the early micros, like the picks and things like that. It, it did. It but, did. but then flash supplanted it like flash, five years later flash. or something. And, yeah. and I think <clears> just the, the fact that memory's gotten so incredibly mm. cheap. Mm. You know, if you buy a PC today, you're going to put, you know, 10, 16 mm. gigabytes in without even thinking. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, or if you look, um, you know, I look at my iPhone. Yeah. I my best guess. I figure there's probably 200 billion transistors in it. I know. Think about it's, that. And again. I actually did some math. I said, what? What, did, what if you built an iPhone using ENIAC technology? <laughs> <laughs> I figured it'd be the size of 170 vertical assembly buildings. Wow. And it costs 50 yep. trillion dollars, and the whole. The GDP of the I whole love, world is sixty trillion. I love it how you relate it to a vertical assembly building. You're talking about, you know, NASA vertical yeah, exactly. assembly building, right? Yeah, yeah. You're like, you know. yeah, it's wow. It, that would discourage wow. texting while driving. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh my goodness, what else? What are the, I think um, the, a big part has been the transition from uh, double E's doing so much of the work with microprocessors yeah. to. Uh, double E's who have become computer science people or CS people who are right. doing it. In the olden days, all, all the work was done by double E's. Yeah. We designed yeah. the hardware. Guys like us. Just yeah. Guys yeah. like us. Exactly. And uh, that was great. And yeah. it worked really well when yeah. systems were simple. They're not simple. And we need more disciplined yeah, right. si uh, computer science guys. And that's, we're getting more and more. Is, that, is that. that your business? A lot of your business today is that, <laughs> here we go, people don't uh -oh. know how to program. Or they don't, they don't really understand embedded logic. They don't know what they're doing. They do their computer science degree and think they can program. And, oh, yeah, I can program a, you that's, know. A, well, two parties. <laughs> the first part is that's the biggest thing I hear from managers. They can't hire people who really understand both the software right. and some of the hardware stuff. Yep. But the reason I do what I do now mm -hmm. is because I've, I have this passion for quality, which seems to be lacking. In many quality cases, quality in, this in what you're talking, what 
in terms of quality? You're talking robustness in terms of code? I'm talking, uh, some people would say software quality is an oxymoron. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but no, in terms of uh, firmware. Quality firmware right. in terms of uh, working reliably and meeting the objectives, the mm -hmm. requirements. And <laughs> we've built this world where every, every three-year-old knows if something electronic does something weird, cycle power. Oh, right. That's yes, I know. Have That's you great. have you tried turn off? And, hello, IT. Have you yeah. tried turn it off and on again? Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. No, we shouldn't have to. That frustrates me. Yeah. And now yeah. we have the security thing, which is yeah. again is a quality thing. Yeah. And it's going to be hacking into cars and this and yeah. And they're yeah. probably hacked into your cameras, right? Yeah. Now. <laughs> I, well, what what do you think about the um, the uh, Volkswagen the VW thing? Is that do you think that's widespread? I. Think that this well, is, shouldn't we go there? No. <laughs> I think that this is should be, but it won't be, right. a wake-up call to management to realize, right. hey, we don't really know what's in the software mm -hmm. that we're yep. selling. Right. And I think it should be a wake-up call to us to be thinking about ethics and engineering. Uh, I'm very strong about this. I mean, I, the IEEE is a code of ethics. Right. And I, I think that yeah, we've got to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. It's really important. Yep. You know, you have to wake up and look at yourself in the mirror. And some engineers at Volkswagen push the wrong bets. Yep. Uh, yep. I, I find that intolerant. Well, it, it must not have come from the engineering level. It's not like some clever engineer went, hey, I can I can hack this code in. It's, it's, it's so, much Some boss up. said. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and also, it's more than an engineer because yeah. it was a domain expert. Somebody said... This is how the gas engine works, and if we do these things, we can make this. Right. And they said to the engineers, do those things yeah. to me. But some engineers said, okay, I'm going to do something which is unethical. Mm -hmm. and I got a real. real right. Yep, that, yep, you know? exactly. So. Yep. I think I, I would have been the guy who leaked it. Yeah. No, I think I would have been the guy who either quit or, or leaked it. You yeah. know, like, yeah. So. You know, it's sort of interesting. It's, <laughs> ethics can be we sort of difficult lower. because. Yep. In many cases, if, if you do the hard thing, you wind up really screwed. But today, in the embedded world, if you quit a job for whatever reason, you can get another job like that. It, so right. there's really little, there would have been a little disincentive for somebody to, to leak the thing. Probably not, most of your watchers aren't, uh, you know, don't speak German, or do only speak German. <laughs> of course. Where does it, I mean, is this stuff, is you, I, I know the answer, but I'm going to ask anyway. Should it be solved at the fundamental design level, or can it and can all or could all this stuff be caught at the testing level? Is testing not good enough? Like, uh, like I'm not talking about the Volkswagen. I'm yep. talking about like the cars that were you know easily hacked via you know um, things. Like, is that something that they just didn't think about testing? They didn't test well enough, or is it more deeper fundamental level? Well, remember, the test is always left to the end of the project. The project yes, is yeah, late, I, I so know, it gets I cut. know. And, yep. <laughs> and, and, and we have data. Yeah. Test doesn't work. Test, right. Most of the time, right. test only exercises half the code. And I, I think test is hugely important. But I like to view quality as a filter thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we have filters, filters like the compiler flags errors. We have tools like lint and static analysis. They flag errors. We have procedures we use like code inspections. And, and each of those are a filter. And test is a filter. And it, this is another... <laughs> Big point of mine. Do As it. engineers, yep. we do numbers. Right. If you, engineering without yes. numbers is no, not, no, no. It's, yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> and uh, at each of those filters, I as engineers, that. we uh, should be measuring the outcome. You know, what, what is that filter getting blocked? How, what percentage? Yep. And how does that compare to industry averages? Very few people do this, which I see is mm -hmm. yep. scary. And I saw, I see it sort of drift away from engineering on the software side. In the hardware side, we're forced to do it. You have to know how many mm. volts, yeah, yeah. how many microseconds, yep. You've, and you have to, and you have all this equipment to measure that kind of stuff. In the software side, it's easy to wave our hands and say, all right. you know, it kind of works and stuff, and I think mm -hmm. it's okay. And um, we, got, we have to do the numbers. What are the <clears throat> fundamental differences between uh, sequential programming embedded and and HDL hardware definition? Languages? Are you involved in the HDL oh, yeah. side of oh, absolutely. things? Is it like a totally different paradigm? It's a completely different paradigm. Yep. They've tried it with System C, which yeah, is sort right. of an HDL. Yeah, They've right. tried to, to rationalize it a little bit. They've tried to do bit. it. Yeah, yeah. But in, with uh, HDLs, everything happens right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with in C, everything yep. happens more or less sequentially. Um, 
is it do you see problems with people coming almost most programmers come from a sequential program well, they by almost by definition they come by from definition. a se sequential yeah. programming background is that the worst place to start being and for being a, 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 a HDL programmer I think coming from that direction makes it very much more difficult to get right. into HDL yep. but I don't see too many Software folks move into HDL. I mm, see yeah, more yeah. logic designers. Logic designers, logic moving designers. Up. You're already Step thinking in parallel. Up. You know, yep. you have to think in yeah, parallel. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so, and but the HDL is getting interesting because now that you can get these really decent FPGAs. Yeah, I know. For a decent like the yep. Xilinx Zinc, that's yep. a cool yep, that's part. That's incredible. Yes. yes. So now suddenly a lot of us have access to these parts yeah, yeah. And, and eval boards, and then. They have to learn HDL, and they start to realize this is a very different way uh -huh. of thinking, and that it's worth. You know, for those of you who are watching, learn, this is way Here we cool go. stuff. <laughs> it is, you know, some of the uh, eval boards you can mm. get. You can build incredible, fast I systems, know. and, and you, without with very little. You can effort. make a startup company impress VCs with yeah. with just a start a startup two hundred dollar startup demo board. And, and you get to, some of the tools are free. At, at least for some yeah, applications, yeah. they're yep. free. I mean. In the it's, olden days, yeah, yeah. you'd pay ten, twelve thousand bucks for a, a, a synthesis tool. Yeah, yeah, you know? at least. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, that's crazy. And in a way, we're, we're sort of in the golden age of electronics. Yep. There's a part of me that says, "Oh, geez, uh, yeah, I know. The surface mount is <laughs> so difficult." Here we go. <laughs> but but on the other side, you can buy their boards. Yep. You know whether they're Raspberry yep. Pi or which I find kind of boring myself. Right. But but all kinds of eval boards from the mm -hmm. vendors and, and build real systems. You have Adafruit and SparkFun and yep. all those uh, uh, vendors. It's it's really been a wonderful time to be in this field. Did the FPGA concept fail? Because everyone <laughs> bet the like everyone thought it yeah everything would be FPGAs. Micros had vanished because FPGAs will become so cheap. You know, why have hard silicon? You know when everything can be soft. And no, they're now it's going in the reverse where they're building the zincs. For example, they're building the ARM cores. They're building the Mac cores. You know the the transceivers. Everything's hard logic. And oh yeah, by the way, it's got some FPGA fabric too. Yeah. You know, is that? Oh, hey, microchip. Do you microchip has a little bit of logic on some of their boards. They, 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 they do. They, yes. They call it, instead yep. of calling it a sea of gates, they call it a puddle of gates. A uh, puddle of gates. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's great. It's, 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 yeah, how many? Like it's a hundred gates. Oh like yeah, it's nothing. Something. But it, yeah, yeah, but it's, it's actually very cool because you can yes. dynamically reconfigure yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You know, just by setting registers. Yeah. Very now, nice. I think the FPGA thing. <clears> you know, with like zinc, we've got you got mm. the two hard cores and. Uh, I did learn, don't Google hard cores. When you're doing uh, yes, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. Bit of safety tip there, thanks. Yeah. But um, <laughs> FPGAs are always going to be expensive because yes. by their nef definition, they're configurable and all that stuff. Yeah, and, and the fabric's large, the, the silicon fabric. Is, fa it, and you, pay per, you still pay per silicon square area. Right? You do, and the FPGA world is still pushing. You know, they're down right now at 16 nanometers, whereas the microcontroller <sighs> Again. world is... is you're lucky if you're at uh, 90 yeah. nanometers. They're yeah. using fully deprecated lab or fabs and all that kind of Th stuff. That's why you can buy your ARM processor for 50 cents because they're yeah. using old fabs. They're, yeah. They've already amortized the fab cost, yeah. right? Absolutely. So, so, and I think what used to be the case was that microcontrollers were expensive. And back then when the FPGAs were first coming out, they, people were saying, hmm, this is pretty interesting. All we had then... At the, before that were PLDs, which yep. are tiny little yes. things. 16 V8s. Oh, man. Yeah, 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 yeah 22 yeah. V10s. <laughs> yeah, all oh, the big ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah what was right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and people said, this is going to be pretty amazing. But then microprocessors got so cheap. I never would have yeah. dreamed that you could get sub-dollar oh. processors. And FPGAs have gotten cheap. But then, like you say... You know, I've got a friend who works at a radio telescope in California, mm. and they always buy the most expensive. Yep. They, they, he tells me the cost is that of a Toyota for each FPGA. They, yeah, a ten thousand dollar FPGA. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And he'll buy hundred, but, but he's sucking in this universe <laughs> of data. <laughs> exactly. And no computer yeah. can handle no, that, no. so he has to. You've you got know, to parallel everything. Beam forming and huge parallel oh. operations like that. It's like, like it, it's begging for FPGA. You just can't yeah. do it sequentially. It's just crazy. But then you look in cars. They're yeah. starting to see FPGAs in cars for doing image processing. Ah, okay. The cameras, some, uh, obstacle yeah. avoidance, and all that right. sort lane, of jazz. Uh, lane keeping avoidance and all that yep. kind of stuff. I've and done a teardown of the lane camera. Yep, FPGA yep. in there. Yeah, yep. and you think about it. That's a cla automotive is a classic. You know, every penny counts. Yeah, sort yeah. Of situation. But now they're 
opposite. Yeah. They have to feature. They've got to put the features in. The only way to do it is the FPGA. Uh, consumers figure about 70% of the value of a car today is the electronics. Wow. So right. everyone just assumes it's going <laughs> yeah, to go yeah, right. and stop. It's got or, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, unless yeah. it's Volkswagen <laughs> or Toyota, right. that goes too much yeah. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh. I, I hate to say it, I have two Toyotas, and I love my Toyotas. But. <laughs> did, did you investigate that? Did you, like, look at that from a curiosity point of view? Uh, look at that case where the... The, the Toyota called me. Oh, they did. And asked me to be their expert witness. Ah. And I... In, in their defense. In their defense. Mm. And I always... I want to be on the right side. Of the, and I asked to look at the evidence. And after I looked at the evidence, I said, I'm sorry, folks. I'm in good conscience. I just can't. Well done. <laughs> well done. We have but a good man here. A friend of mine, yes. uh, Mike Barr, uh, was yeah. on the other side. And they actually prevailed last year in at least they one did. of the cases. Right. Okay. Toyota was fined one point two billion dollars. Really? I didn't think hear about that. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's less than a million lines of code. So they yep. now have the coveted most expensive code ever written. <laughs> 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 nice. Oh goodness. Uh, I mean, but that should be a wake up call to the big bosses up here to say yep. we better get this stuff under control. You know, software is not just something we have to throw in there. Mm -hmm. Software is where if the customers see 70% of the value in the electronics, which is yep. basically the software, that's where they have to get the stuff right. Right. I've heard there's some industries like um, possibly like the intrinsically safe industries and stuff like that where where code, micro code must be vetted line by line by an independent, you know, and you pay per line of code. Yep. You know, is that, does does that work or is that just a, money grab like then so they catch a lot of stuff or does it that is know? a philosophical question that ev right. everyone's been asking so for right. example avionics is really really good and you have to go through this vetting yep. process with this called do 178 b and c it's very expensive but nobody knows if it's because of that or because the companies have a culture of safety got it got you know? right, that, right there's no data right. so it's interesting so it's suggestive that the 178 and I'm I believe it does work, but there's that safety culture which exactly, which, which is totally different of. in yeah. the airline industry as opposed to anywhere else. You know exactly in the U.S. We talk about the uh, medical device market. Oh my God, our Federal Drug Administration is so clueless. <laughs> they are trying to figure out how to deal with software, and they right. are just. Matter of fact, I was talking to the group that's involved, mm. and half of them did quit en masse because oh, they're so frustrated right. they couldn't get anything done. And these are devices like pacemakers. Yeah. Yeah, Wait, keep which your are, life. Yeah, keep your life. I know. And they're embedded processes. Yeah, they're yeah. embedded in you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> exactly. It's like, yeah, life or death. Yeah. You know? It's, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And there have been many cases where medical devices have killed people because yep. of, of software problems. And, um, you know, it's, we need to get our hands wrapped around this, figure, figure this out. And I... I am a guy. I hate regulation. I, I do think a certain amount of regulation is necessary in a, a capitalistic economy, mm -hmm. but I, the heavy hand of regulation can right, be a little bit right. too much. But I'll tell you, if we don't get our act together, the feds are going to be all over us. You can be sure mm, of that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What should people do? Should people get into embedded, or is it like just it's going? No, it's going to be flooded with, you know. You know, like just programmers who they churn them out like there's no tomorrow. Is there a niche still a niche out there for really talented embedded programmers? I, there absolutely is, but the absolute best place for someone to be in this industry is sitting on that divide between the software and the hardware. I always encourage people if they're interested in embedded, go into electrical engineering. Right. Learn how electronics work. Maxwell's laws. You're going to forget them all. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> of course. Yeah, don't ask me. <laughs> but, but it gives you that grounding yeah. in, in electronics. And then stay in electronics. Mm -hmm. do, the, do the software, but keep your fingers one hand on an oscilloscope. And yep. one, you know, find a job, because there are a lot of them, mm -hmm. where you're not just stuck in some corner writing code all day long. I mean, I've been doing this professionally for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. And to me, this is as, as exciting as the day I started. This awesome. Is, this is a... More Way so, cool. it's got to be. It is. Yeah, yeah. And, but if I were not doing the electronics, I'd be bored to tears. Yeah. The code's great. Software's fascinating. But was, you know, when you first write some software that controls something, something makes something blink and move, yeah. and oh, man, that's so satisfying. Can you be 
the world's best embedded programmer without knowing the hardware? I would is it, is argue, it possible? I would argue no. Not. Because at some point, you're not embedded. Yes, and right. That's what you're we removed see. from that. Today, people are yeah. putting big old processors in running, for example, Linux. They're running OSs. That's yeah. the. And you don't yeah, need yeah. to know any embedded to program for Linux. Right, right. Uh, and I talk to a lot of managers who say the only reason they're dropping, say, Linux is in is so they can hire dollar an hour programmers. Yeah, you know. and that's the. But, it, but, but, there's, but there's another controller. But that's in a there. good economic move, but it's yes. also the wrong move, right? It's the wrong move. It's not yeah. going to give you the reliable, yeah. uh, well architected stuff. But there'll always be another microprocessor in there, and that's being done by the deeply embedded people. Yes. And that's that's yeah. where to get in. And <clears throat> it's never been easier. My God, you look at I know. eBay. You can buy a great, not, not today's, but a great Tektronix scope. For nothing. I know. For nothing. <laughs> I know. Yeah, matter of fact, you can buy a brand new Tektronix scope for $500, a low yep. end part. Um, and signal generators, and I mean, test equipment is, has never been more yep. available than it has been today. I know, it's incredible. Yeah. And, and development tools, they're practically giving them away. They are. They you are. know, you can yeah. get a, like a $4 launch, you know, TI launch pad or whatever. And like, it's insane. Uh, but, but you can buy 10 of them and screw yeah. them up. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and, and the components, yeah, yeah. Dig, DigiKey, yeah. for example, being on online, you know, you need to buy one lousy resistor. Well, you have to pay the shipping charges. Yeah, but yeah. you still, you can do that. You can do it. And it'll be there tomorrow. I mean, it's, it's, it's it has never been really a better, I don't want to say easy. I think the challenges are far mm -hmm. bigger than they used to be. But um, it's never been a better time to do this. It's never been easier to get access to the, the technology. Should you be should beginners be relying on and using libraries, like because that's the Arduino thing, right? Yeah, they're still programming okay. <laughs> in C, right? They're programming in C, but yeah. they're using libraries for everything. They're even using libraries to write to the I/O. I mean, it's you know, it, you know, that's <clears throat> a yin and a yang. Yeah, you know, one of the uh, sites I really like is embed.org. They are mm -hmm. a uh, they provide an online compiler. It's hosted under by web browser, basically, for a bunch of different arm, uh, arm boards. Mm -hmm. And all the drivers are built in. You don't need to know anything. And for me, if I need to get something going quickly, that's sometimes the right way to go. But, but, here's but, the but. if there's something that I, that I have a real problem with, and it's, this is against the grain, it's a maker movement. Oh, OK. okay. Yes, now, tell I, us. I've got tell us. two sides to this. Yep. Yeah. I admire the maker movement. Yes, I, it's awesome, isn't it? I yeah. admire anybody who wants to build something with their hands. That's fabulous. Anything but, that gets kids into electronics, I'm happy with. I don't care yes. how they get in. Yeah, or, that, or that's good. Or anything with your yeah. hands, fixing yeah, yeah, yeah. cars, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever it might be. Whatever. But but the other side of it is, I think in many cases the maker movement is sort of facile. It right. keeps you from really, or unless you work hard, it keeps you from digging down to the next layer to see yeah. how things really work. Yeah, I can get an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi and drop it in here and make yeah. lights blink, and that's cool. And if it gets the kids excited, that's it's great. It's great, but... And if they then yeah. take that next jump, say, now, why does the yeah. current only go one way through that LED? Uh, why is it that I have to issue this set of statements in order to toggle this bit? I'm going to look at the library and then the generated assembly code hmm. to see, uh, oh my god, there's registers. This is yeah, pretty cool. Well, what is this? This is a pretty magic cool. I didn't know existed <laughs> inside here. Yeah, you know, you start yeah. looking at things like the diode equation. Mm. I mean, it's sort of interesting because you can't really do electronics unless you understand that there's a temperature coefficient associated with it. And there's nonlinearities. Oh. Non <laughs> yeah. You put a transistor in a feedback loop in a bamp and suddenly, whoa, you've got yeah. a, the coolest log amp I've ever seen. Yeah. Someone put an 8080 in the feedback loop of an op amp. Just oh, <laughs> just because. <laughs> just two inputs as a diode. <laughs> right. Nice. Very nice. But I mean, until you pursue that, yeah. if somebody's willing to pursue that, oh my God, awesome. If they just want to play, and let's face it, Arduino was originally for artists yeah. who wanted yeah. to do art. And that's great. I mean, that's wonderful. Mm. Do art. That's fine. But um, I get frustrated every time I hear the press celebrating some genius 16 year old because he made a light blank <laughs> <laughs> yep exactly you know I'll tell you when yeah, my I, son was uh, <laughs> oh, when my son like... was like 14 he was uh, a task in high school with building a, a 
a board with a bunch of LEDs and different buttons, and you press different buttons, different LEDs would light up. Yep. It was an obviously a diode problem. Right. And I said, Graham, if it were me, I'd throw a computer in, because I could change. So we put a computer in. I taught him how to program in C. Mm -hmm. His tester, was, his teacher was completely pissed off. <laughs> really? <laughs> it wasn't the right answer. I just, I, but, uh, but you were trying to teach him a new skill. Yeah. 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 And yeah. like I said before, he got started. He just seeing physics. Yep. You know, so something caught. Excellent. Now, I can't talk to him about physics anymore. It's way over it's, my yeah. <laughs> Dummy dad. I, yeah, yeah, it is. Know, it is. Yeah. Been in the industry 40 years and you know nothing. I know. Well, <laughs> the thing about children is children always know that you know yep. nothing. Yep. And Mark Twain said, when I was 16, I couldn't believe how little my dad knew. And when I was 21, I couldn't believe how much he had learned in five years. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, like kids know how to operate technical gear before they're like three, four. Uh, it's incredible. It's almost embarrassing. But it is. <laughs> we don't have kids at home anymore. But yeah. I, I used to give them my phone when I had a problem. Said, "Can you tell me what to do? I don't want to read the manual." <laughs> exactly. They just get it because they've they been do. brought up in this world. They have been. It's is a, that? But is that? Can that be a hindrance because they don't? They haven't had to, you know, do the hard. You know, they've grown up where, where they can just Google the answer, right? We can never do that. We 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 had to have our bookshelf with all our data sheets and. Or run experiments. Everything. Or run experiments and, yeah. you know, or salvage parts. We didn't have DigiKey. Yeah. You know, we couldn't just buy the, you know, the resistors we wanted. I, I'm not sure. We're, I, I often wonder this. What, I, is it the best thing or the worst thing? It's like... You know, it, no, it's better. I would never want to go back. No, I wouldn't want I to would go back. Ne but but are, yeah, they, yeah. are they somehow uh, uh, de demeaned a little bit by it? Lesser experience Less, because of it. You know, I wonder. We have yeah. a, a sailboat and I still use a sextant to navigate just, well to, just to keep in practice. Yep. Yeah. But I but, admit, sometimes I get the, yeah. the time from the GPS. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why would anyone in their right mind use a section? It's stupid. Yeah, it's Today, we have right. the technology of GPS. Yep. But I, I find it sort of satisfying to be able to do that. Mm. You know, I still remember, like I'm sure you do, how to use a slide rule. I haven't used one in years. No, but no, I, I have, no, I have never used a slide rule. That no is, kidding. I, no, I was, I was, I'm, I'm not that old. Okay. <laughs> as much as I say it, no, I was brought up in the Kids calculator. these days. Yeah, yeah. I can remember, I do remember when they first allowed calculators in the schools, though, that was yeah. a big deal. But yeah, no, we were brought up with, no, but I was at the age where we didn't. Yeah learn to use slide rules. So. See, the upside of having learned to use a slide rule is you, yeah. just, you realize how logarithms. Yes. You, you and, can add and numbers and with the, logarithms. Are the you answer to everything. Yeah. You know, like, you can do anything. With but logarithms. is it useful? When was the last time I pulled out a table of logarithms? Yeah, yeah. I no, can't remember. No, exactly. Yeah, I can't remember. You know, I, today, the level of abstraction is so high. Your phone. You're manipulating billions of transistors. How important is it that somebody knows, you know, what PN junctions are? It's important to me that I know, uh, but for the average person on the street, they, they yeah. don't need to know. I, I sometimes wonder what the average person is thinking. It's like when they pull that out, it's like, is this a miracle? <laughs> well, no, dude. Some, yeah, yeah, some yeah, engineers it's, it's, it's designed engineers this thing. Design, a lot of engineers designed, <laughs> yeah. a lot of, from a lot of disciplines, yeah. designed this. You know? And that really yeah, it yeah. goes, you know, for anyone who's thinking about going into this field, I really... And I've said this many times. I really believe engineering is a noble profession. It is. We it have, is. We're we the are. Profe yeah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> we're the people who have build this technical yeah. universe, and um, I think mm. that is really cool. Although I have got to admit that, you know, you said, does the average user care about the sil does care about the PN junction? I've got to admit, I don't. Like I know practically nothing about silicon manufacturing. How you know, chips are actually designed and manufactured. That is not my feeling. Hey, your whiteboard. I'm looking over. Oh, you dopants. are looking at silicon doping <laughs> from a yeah. I don't, you know, but I can look it up. You know, it's like I, you know, this does, like some of it comes from my head, but I have yeah. to check. You know, I like oh, because yeah. I'm because I'm a I'm a practicing hmm. engineer. I don't design chips. I never have. That was you know, never did a course in designing chips. It yeah. was always you know, application level stuff. Yeah, I understand the concepts, but. And I mean, you, you know, understand. I've, you understand the real concepts. I, I, like, I understand like, the concepts. Know, temcos and all the stuff. Yeah, of course. Right. Of course. And you, don't, you don't need to know the yeah. quantum mechanics. No, I don't need okay. to know. At the some point, yeah, you, you want to cut it off. It, right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Of course. Um, I recently bought a couple of uh, silicon wafers of MCUs off of eBay mm. and mounted them over my desk because yep. I realized people come in and I talk to them and they just 
they have no idea. That what's they literally. Yeah, yeah. And we had this young, <laughs> this young uh, insurance guy come by not long ago, twenty something, and uh, he's sitting in the office. And I have all my stuff out, and uh, I, he pointed to a remote control that was torn mm -hmm. apart, a TV remote control. And, oh yeah, this is the processor. There's a computer and a TV remote control. Control? I know. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, there is. That's yeah. how it works. It's, yeah. you know. I mean, maybe people are better off being insulated from all this madness because it drives us crazy. <laughs> Although, you know, everyone talks about scientific literacy in public, right? The public should have scientific knowledge, right? Should they have engineering knowledge as well? Should they have engineering? I used to I used to think that everyone should have basic knowledge of math, science, and engineering. And engineering. And then my daughter, yeah. who is a delightful and very smart individual. I mean, she's very smart. I learned from her that she cannot learn math. She always got A's in math <coughs> because she memorized right. every possible solution. Right. Every yeah, problem. of course. But there's some wiring that Deep, just doesn't uh, yeah, click. Yeah, doesn't understand you know? it. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's wiring in me that doesn't click with, say, art. Right. Like, you know, we <laughs> went to the Sydney Ar Opera House this week. And I love classical music, but I, and I've tried so hard to learn to love opera, and I can't. You can't. <laughs> I just yep. can't get it. Yeah. So I guess we're all wired differently. People's brains are wired in yeah. different ways, yeah. yeah. No, no matter, I, I always like to say, no matter, I could spend my entire life learning how to play chess from the best people in the world. I'm not going to get beat Gary Kasparov at no. chess. It's just no. not going to happen. His yeah. brain is wired differently. It, it is. It's just, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. And then, by the same token, you can't interest me for all the money in the world in playing a game. <laughs> right. I just have no interest in playing games. I don't know why. It's just like computer just, games. I, right. Not, just zero. Not zero. zero. Yeah. Well, or, you weren't brought up in the age. I mean, I... Well, even uh, checkers yeah. and, and board right. games. Even, right. Yeah, I have still no interest, no, no you know, interest again, at all. Right. Again, just a wiring problem. I'd rather, right. rather sit and read. We've got to talk about 8-bit. We've, we've, we've got to talk about it. You'd know my question. I, I know your question, and uh, I think that uh, everyone is saying that 8-bits is dead. Yep. Or 8-bits will be dead. Yep. Uh, I'm not convinced. And the reason is uh, a couple of reasons. First mm. of all, what's going to replace 8-bits? Arm. Arm, right. Uh, yeah, but, arm is everything. Right. But there's an arm tax. There is an arm tax. You pay for it. You pay for it. There's no 8-bit tax. Yep. So you'll never get below that arm ta tax. So you could conceivably build... An eight bit processor for nothing like, you know, those electronic greeting cards, you open mm -hmm. them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they've got a 60 derivative of a 6502 in them. They or, or an 8051 or whatever. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. they paid three cents for the part. Yeah, wow, okay. three cents. Think about that. A die, bear die, and then they just. Bear die with epoxy glove. Yep, yeah. yep, chip on board. Yeah. I, <laughs> three cents. <laughs> just think of it. People have been telling me since about 1990 that eight bits mm. is, is dead. Yeah. And, um, I view this whole thing as the prices at the top, as they come down, they push everything else down mm. to the point where uh, we're seeing like a wafer chip scale pack packaging yeah. to that. God, I hate them. Oh, tell me about it. Yeah, but they're, they're evil, but... They're evil. But, but they think enable how things. cheap they are. Yes, they're so cheap bam, and bam, they bam, 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 to slice the whole yeah. thing up. Because it costs money to package chips. It does. But this is driving that price way down. Um, and so... 32 gets cheaper, and it's pushing 8 bits cheaper. 8 bits is always going to be built on old-fashioned fabs, which helps a lot. And uh, I, I think we're going to have a world of Johnny Appleseed, where people are just spraying sensors around because the sensors cost a millionth of a cent each. Yes. And a lot, maybe all of those will be 8-bit processors. Maybe, so you, maybe so you think the, the Internet of Things will be 8-bit? Uh, I think the Internet the of Things side. will be a mix. I think yeah. we'll have 8-bit oh, sensors yeah, course, and maybe yeah. every 100th hundredth, hundredth sensor is a 32-bit doing oh, okay. a mesh networking or something. Right. But so it's going to be heter higher heterogeneous level, higher sort level. Of environment. Yeah. And I will say that's, that's one of my least favorite terms in the world, Internet of Things. Yes, I that's know. I know. Damn it's, grown, marketing. it's grown worthy, isn't it? Yeah, some yeah. marketing <laughs> dweeb came up. <laughs> We've been building the Internet of Things for 20 years. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like they came up with this yesterday. Give me a break. <laughs> And what specifically don't you like? Do you think it's not going to happen the way people think it's going to happen? Like, you know, yeah. is every light bulb going to be, you know, internet enabled? I don't think so. There's something about the simplicity of a switch just off on that just it is always is never going to be beatable. I don't want to have to go to my telephone to turn on a light switch. Yes. I don't want to. <laughs> 
control my lights mm. when I'm 10,000 miles away. I don't want to think about my lights when I'm 10,000 miles away. There's a niche application. Yeah, there, in some cases, yeah, yeah, build, yeah. In, in industrial buildings and yeah. things, fantastic. But I think the average person doesn't even want to screw in a new light bulb. Go to it, an average person's house, half the bulbs are burnt out. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're too lazy to change it. So yeah. they're, and they're too lazy to pick up their phone to uh, flick yeah. the switch, to you know change the color or the intensity. They just want to walk past. Oh, there's the switch. I know it's always there. It's always worked. Yeah. It never runs out of battery. I never have to charge it. It's always there. Yeah. I mean, we, uh, we will have uh, an explosion, of, if you want to call it the Internet of Things. We mm. certainly are going to have that because... There are a lot of other things that will be instrumented. All of your test equipment, your car, all the, all the. But um, when it comes to uh, an awful lot of thing, uh, other things, I don't think that's going to happen. And I think what will happen is something very surprising. Tell us. I don't know what it is. Oh. Think about the year two thousand. Would yeah. you have thought of smartphones? No, it's no. well, no, no. no. Something that's, very surprising. No one thought about the internet. No. You know, oh well, the internet, but nobody thought about the World Wide Web. Nobody thought about online e-commerce, and you know, like uh, uh, encyclopedia like, online for free. I, pff, no, way, no, no way, no way, no way, no. not possible. What happens? It seems like everything that it really is dramatic mm. is something that nobody anticipated, and and I think in ten years we're, we're going to face something which is going to be so cool and so unanticipated and so revolutionary, and. I hear so many people saying, yeah, but, you know, everything's been invented. Well, man, they said that no, in the no, I know, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the head of the patent office said yeah. that, didn't he? Right? Yeah. Everything that has been invented has. Is, is it going to come by way of, well, you don't know, because it's like it hardware. Will. Is it going to be hardware enabled? Is it going to be new software, new you ways know, of, you know? It's going to be both. I mean, if, yeah. I, if I look at the business, there, I think we're sort of in a plateau today. And the plateau is... There are a lot of new things coming out. Mm. You know, there's Facebook, Twitter. Let's say that, that's, that's right. crap. I mean, there's, 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 there's no value to those. There, there is huge value. <laughs> there is value. Come on, I know but, you're uh, not a Twitter man. No, well, I've actually started tweeting. You, you have tweeting. started. Yeah. You have started tweeting. I mean, they're nice, yeah. but they're not. They don't offer uh, the kind of value that we have gotten with other revolutions. They're, they, they're, know, they're valuable for people in, in my position. And or you know our position, kind they, of they thing, to reach an audience. They enable communication with an audience. And and every yeah. new Com app is a killer app. <laughs> Ever since the smoke yeah, signals, yeah. Right. <laughs> you know when the um, I was reading about the transatlantic cable when they laid that it cost a hundred dollars to send a ten word message across yes. the Atlantic, and you could buy a house for a thousand. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was the killer app then. Yeah, yeah. And then the telephone. And I look back. I'm I'm older. I. I <laughs> I'm interested in the history of this stuff. I talked to my grandmother. She died years ago, but she grew up in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And I said, did you have a telephone in Manhattan? And she just said, oh, I knew someone on the other side of the island who had a telephone. <laughs> my, my wow. Great, my great-grandfather, whom I never knew, he died in the, in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. He died a year before he got electricity. Now, I look at my parents grew up in the vacuum tube, tube era. Of course. I started electronics in the vacuum tube era, although ICs had been invented. But um, and now mm. look at you know in a single generation yep. how things have, have changed. I I don't want to denigrate things like Facebook and whatnot, but I don't think that they they are revolutionary uh, in that mm. in bringing oh new bold concepts. It's just, right. It's sort of, no, sort of no. More, it's, oh, it's a same thing over and over. Same thing over. It's over a over. communication enabler. It enables enables yeah. people to communicate and things like Or to waste like time. Or to waste time. <laughs> exactly. People waste time watching stuff like this. But no, I, I mean, I, you're you're getting into the YouTube thing now. You I have am. a YouTube. I channel. do have a YouTube channel, and I guess it's called Jack Gansel or something. I don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's searching Jack Gansel. It turns right. out. Yep. And to tell you the truth, I've got mixed feelings about it because. Okay. Um, I don't like watching video on the computer. I mm -hmm. find it, uh, it eats up too much time. It, 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 it does. Yeah, yes, yes, it's a big time sink. I would rather sink. be doing something else. Yep. However, and as you really said, yeah. you know, this is the way people communicate today. Mm. And I want to be able to communicate with people today. Hey, I'm an old fart. <laughs> 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 Younger people have different ways of communicating. Yeah. And, and I, that's really important. I mean, if, mm. if I were still communicating with smoke signals, no one would listen. You know? Right. Or, uh, uh, so personally, I, I like writing. I like reading. 
I think that you can convey lots of information in a very concise way. You can. Video can be really useful. Like, how do you do this thing? Visually. Oh, man. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. We're building a new barn, and uh, I've never done this before. Like, how do you shingle? Uh, YouTube videos. YouTubers. YouTube videos. Yeah, no, you, you can't get that from a blog post. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You, know? you, can't. you can get from, from photos, and but yeah. you can't beat somebody showing you yeah. how to do it. Yeah, that's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, but my thinking is that if people are communicating with video, it's important mm. to um, communi communicate with video. And so anyway, I've started doing this, and some of it's fun. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like your panache that you have uh, with thank yours. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Um, you've been doing this, you told me, what, four and a half years full-time? Four and a half years full-time now, yes. Wow. Yeah. It, this is a job that literally did not exist seven years ago. It, you, you could not do it. Nobody was doing online video as a job. Well, you think know. about that. That's how much the world has yeah. changed in, yeah, in totally. a very short period of time. Yep. Um, it's phenomenal. It's crazy. I have no idea what Sagan, and what world he's going to grow up you know he's four now what you know in in 20 years time you know he graduates university or whatever you know like what the hell world are we going to be living in you know when my kids uh, were little people owned computers but you had to be pretty well off pc you did you know pc yes. was very expensive back then when they went to college they they were required to have laptops by the school wow they were yep and that's how that fast was, things changed. Yeah, no, that was unheard of yeah. for me when I went to school. Yeah, it was just same. yeah. You you had a calculator. That's what yeah. you had. You know, that was the big thing you took to school. When I went to the University of Maryland, we had mm -hmm. forty thousand students on the one campus and yep. one computer, a big <laughs> Univac eleven oh eight. Yep. And everyone shared time on that. And uh, but for me, getting access to that, oh god, it was like magic. It was yeah, so yeah. cool. And I got in a lot of trouble. Uh -huh. Doing a lot of things I shouldn't have done, uh -huh. <laughs> but um, that's how much it's changed. I mean, that that was a ten million dollar machine, and I'm thinking probably when they got rid of it, they couldn't get, find no, someone to you, give it to. No, you, you could not give it away. No, <laughs> yeah. it was useless. Yeah, it was useless. And that's how fast things change. And now you buy a smartphone. It's like I just had to get a new smartphone, and my old one was only two years old. It was useless because the new update, the new Android update, just made it. Yeah just flaky and just it didn't work properly I, I couldn't use it anymore I use it I have to have a reliable device and it just yeah, yeah. wasn't wasn't reliable are we getting to a point where reliability is too is like going to be the fundamental problem software like the functional reliability of products I think we're approaching that on both yeah. sides I mean you look at flash memory like mm -hmm. multi-level cell Apparently, there's the difference. Well, you've got hardware reliability. Electrons. You've got hardware reliability, and you've 20 got electrons. Think about mm, that. Yeah, Operating at We're one volt. At one, you've got that's crazy. Sub threshold operation it's now crazy. they're looking at with yeah. FDSOI. They're reverse biasing the. Uh, I mean, this is scary <gasps> stuff. Oh, that is scary stuff. But the complexity is largely in mm. the software now. And again, I'm a numbers guy. If you mm. have a, a cell phone, will have 10 to 15 million lines of code on it. Suppose you have a one percent error rate. Oh, it's no, it's no. insane. For, you know, forget it. It's in real, crazy. in real life, if you get a ninety on a test, you get an A. Yeah, yeah. No, in software, in, if you get ninety-nine point nine 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 nine, you flunk. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Hardware. Do you see any future for quantum computing mainstream? <laughs> you know, um, at all, because uh, that that is a totally different paradigm at the hardware level. Boy, is it ever totally a like, like I used all to, all rules are out. I used to be afraid of it. And the reason I was afraid of, of it was, I don't know enough quantum mechanics to understand. Yeah. But then I <laughs> realized, too. I realized what's going to happen. There's going to be an API. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it's like, going to be fine. Yeah, yeah. No problem at all. That's it. Yeah. When yeah. they finally, I have no doubt that they're going to figure out a way of making quantum computing working work. Yep. Uh, and then they're going to, because those are the physicists, the scientists. Mm. But engineering is about building stuff. They're going to wrap mm -hmm. that with something, some interface that you and I. Can actually start to manipulate. Yes, and it'll be it'll be fun. It'll be different because we're going to be talking about super, super, superposition of states and all this See, kind of and stuff. And it enables di higher, different order of processing oh. than what even you know, like the difference between you know, like orders of magnitude difference between sequential programming and parallel FPGA. Yep. You've got orders of magnitude again to quantum in terms of what it's capable of doing. 
I um, think that uh, I'm old enough that I'm not going to uh, uh, be exposed to it. But I would say <laughs> people going into this field today yeah, yeah. are going to wind up doing quantum computing. Right. I think we're going to see in the next, oh, I mean, there's D-Wave. D wave. Uh, I, yes. Do they really have a quantum computer? We don't. We know. don't know. It's a bit. It's a bit smoke and mirrors. It kind is of. In bit. terms of, yeah, yeah, they reckon. Yeah, the run the same application on a high end sequential processor, and it's about the same. About so the same. It's it's hard it's to say. Bit, yeah. But you can see sort of the market is mm. being nibbled at a little bit. People are starting mm -hmm. to encroach on it. And and the BS will eventually fade away right, to be replaced by the science. So yep. I think I. That could be a very exciting thing for young people to go into. But if they're going to do that, they're going to need to know a lot more physics than yes. I grew up and with. Yes, boy, exactly. That's for sure. More and more. Uh, I don't think that, um, you know, my dad was a mechanical engineer. I don't think they had invented the electron when he was young. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and now, you know, I studied a little bit of quantum in, in mm -hmm. college, just enough to scare me. Yep. Uh, uh, now, I mean, I know that undergrads in physics get exposed to a lot of quantum mechanics, mm -hmm. which is amazing. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, in, it's incredible. What you need to know. Is it getting to the point where in engineering, I've, I've argued this, en in electronics engineering, for example, you do your electrical engineering degree, just so much to learn now that it just the course just gets more diluted because they they have to try and teach them so many things you know i've been uh, uh, worked with a number of colleges on their curriculum yeah excellent yeah. and um what i've what i have learned is that it's impossible you're trying to stuff you have basically a five pound bag and you, you're trying to stuff 20 pounds worth of stuff you've, you've got that four years you, you can't you've got that well now it's five for most people oh and, is it in the okay. double equal right. yeah okay because the, they right. say there's so much stuff. Mm -hmm. And I often say, gee, we should be doing this. But you can't. And so now there's been this huge raging debate, uh, especially with software. Mm -hmm. Should we have these software boot camps? So you learn to be a CS person in, in eight weeks. Right. And I'm okay. thinking, okay, that's yeah, yeah. sort of like trade school, learn to be a plumber. <laughs> Except even to learn to be a plumber takes years. Yes. You go to school for a year, but then you're a journeyman. You can or learn the basics, but, but you don't, yeah, you don't get the art. You don't get yeah. the, you know, the craft. And um, what mm. should you learn in college for a double E? I think an awful lot of theory is important, but then how much of that transistor theory class do I really remember? Yep, exactly. Or do you yeah. really need? Or do you, exactly. When was the last time you solved the differential equation? No, never. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been saying that for years. Like, yeah. I have, ever since I learned it, I've never solved an integral in my entire career. I've learned, you know, I've used the concepts of yeah. integrals or a differential and never, so, never had to solve one. That was you know? that course, the differential equations was a whole yeah, semester yeah. for me. It really pissed me off. It was multiple semesters. <laughs> you, know, you know, it was like it was never ending. You know, well, we get to the end of the class doing all these differential, yeah, yeah. and then the teacher says, "Oh, by the way, you, actually, almost all differential equations can't be solved." I'm like, "What <laughs> the heck did you just waste a semester?" <laughs> I know. I just, I, I hated it because I couldn't. You know, yeah. I the, the concepts are important. Yeah, they are. For yeah. A little bit of first order differential yeah, equation, yeah, 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 that's yeah. that's important. Yeah. A little bit of integration, that's yeah, really well, important. Important concept, yeah. yeah. And if you want to take it further, that's awesome too. Yep. Um, but basic, you know, basic mm. electronics is really important. Mm. Getting your hands. When I went to college. Uh, we weren't allowed to solder. We might burn ourselves. Oh no! <laughs> I, I didn't know they had political correctness back then. Like they you know, did. like uh, oh, you've got to work in a safe and be a yeah, safe environment. Yeah, really. And I've been working as a yeah. technician for yeah. years, and my fingers are all. Yeah, yeah, I still yeah. can't feel anything hot anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I, I've hired a lot of double E's over the years, the yep. best double E's I've hired are the ones who either worked as a technician, yep. or were Come from really a hobby devoted to a hobby background. Yeah, yeah. People are, totally. They realize, well, you know, you put an electrolytic in backwards, it explodes. <laughs> <laughs> in your face. Yeah. Your glasses are covered with oil. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't teach that. Well, they can't. They can't no, teach can't. everything. It's there's not just, time. No, no. No, there's yeah. not. So, and so people, I think, to be successful need to develop a passion for it and, and play with it on, on the side. You know, it's, it's, the theory is, is truly usually important. And I, I really have found that uh, I use a lot of the theory. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I, 
I don't have a job. So I get to do what... This would be a cool thing to do. This is not a job. I know. We, we I know. Were, we're just, both going to welfare. Yeah. <laughs> and so we were just commenting before this when he came in. Yeah, we just both just bum around. That's what we bum do. I do. You sit around, drink beer for mm. breakfast, yeah, you know, no. stuff like that. That's, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. No. It's good life. <laughs> and do you miss it, though? Do you miss, like, really hardcore designing every day? No, um, because I get to do design of things I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes the hardcore design, you spend months and months and months on one thing. Oh, I know, it's and annoying. I, I, yeah, yeah. I know engineers yeah. who spend years on a project. I yeah. would get bored. Yep. And then it gets canned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. How about yourself? I mean, what do you, what do you think about it? I mean, yeah, I'm kind of on one hand disappointed that I can't work on you know, hands-on electronics every day. On yeah. the other hand, I enjoy... What I'm doing, I like just bumming around. You know, sometimes I don't want the grind of, you know, of, of design because sometimes it is it, it is a grind. I'm often happy just thinking of ideas and going and googling data sheets and going, oh yeah, I think I can use that, and just planning things instead of actually executing them. You know, that yeah. often has a lot of satisfaction that, for me. What I know? found is that as I went through my career was, as a design engineer, you spend an awful lot of time working on this one board. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for me, sometimes the best part is the uh, high-level design. Yes. Figuring how yeah, it's going to work. The system design. System level. design and yeah, give yeah. it to the uh, yeah. EEs to actually implement it. And then uh, hang over their shoulders and help them mm. where they, when they run into trouble. Especially, yeah. typically, when they run into trouble, trying to make the thing work. <laughs> yep. that, that's, that's a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah, um, troubleshoot. I love troubleshooting. Yeah, you know, yeah, troubleshooting yeah. is brilliant uh, yeah. when it doesn't work. And, and you learn something. Yeah, you, you do. Know, you learn a lot. And Well, you do. You take all these things apart and figure mm. out how they work. And I, I wound up doing a fair amount of that as well, both the software side and, and the hardware side. Um, I, I, I was involved in an uh, expert witness case this summer where all the code was commented in Chinese. Uh, right. <laughs> At least it was commented. Yeah, well, I guess. <laughs> Little hieroglyphics and things. <laughs> Um, and so you know, I had to figure out how it worked, and that was really cool. That was that was a, a tremendous amount of fun. I enjoyed doing that. What about people who comment for the sake of commenting? Like you know, like it's like A equals B plus C, and the comment is A equals B plus C. Like, like it doesn't explain anything. You know, uh, it, I have had a tremendous amount of success in my career. Back when I had a career, yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, hiring English majors to write code. And the reason ah. is, they tend to be very good at expressing ideas clearly. Right. Yes. I just have to teach yes. them C. Of course. Yeah, teach yeah. them C and some right. debugging and stuff like that. But their comments are beautiful and correct. They won't let bad comments go out. Wow. Their code yes. tends to be beautifully structured. Yes. Sometimes you have to jump in and help them, you know, right. get that right. But I'll tell you, whereas a lot of software folks are resistant to typing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know how that works. Why do I have to explain it to yeah, someone else? Yeah, any idiot who knows. Uh, you know, like, yeah. and, and a week later, they're like, what the heck was I thinking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's called job security, isn't it, in the embedded world? They say never comment anything because if you comment it, you, they won't need you. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Oh, which, isn't the, which isn't the truth. And if there were one yes. thing I could wish for for the mm -hmm. uh, software community would be that we took more pride and craftsmanship in our the way we put our code together, the way we comment our code, the way we mm. maintain it so the comments are always correct. Uh, it's pride of authorship. Yes. It's so important. Yes. You know? Um, and that's true if you're designing a circuit. Mm. You know? I, I designed a circuit though, oh geez, it must be, it must be around 1983, something like that. 17 ICs. It's not by far nowhere near the most complex circuit, but it was tightly wrapped around yeah, the software, yeah, yeah. and it was a, my my proudest design of all time. Excellent. I wish I had saved the damn schematics, <laughs> <laughs> but that was back when yeah, we did yeah, everything yeah. on D size sheets of vellum and stuff, yep. you know. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I like the projects where I can sort of fuss over like the lots of little detail and stuff like that, you know, and just get yeah. like little things right that just matter to me, you know. Yeah. It's like. And, yeah. and, and in the embedded world, when you're right on that, that dividing line, mm. or, and then you start to lose the dividing line with the software, should this be in software or should this yeah. be in hardware? Oh, I can save a few chips if I move it over to the software. Uh -huh. And today, maybe that's less important in some ways than it used to be because hardware is so cheap. Mm. You know, we don't care. But 
it's very satisfying to make this beautiful design that just just works. All the components are working. The software as a, as a component too. They're all working together as one. That's that's why that's I never finish my own projects often because I like ten half finished projects because I keep fussing over it. You know, whereas if I'm you know doing a job for a living, either a consulting job or I'm working for the man, you know, designing something, I've got a deadline and you know, it it changes your whole mindset. I, I sometimes it takes the fun out of it. That yeah, deadline, I know. Yeah, that yeah, deadline's yeah, approaching, yep. and you're like, you know, I, I, I really don't need to do this any better, but I really wish I could do this a little bit better. But the deadline's there, like you say, the man is, is something yep. is is pressuring mm. you, and and, um, and you've got to show tangible goals along the way. You've got your design review meeting. You've got to show progress. You know, like, and sometimes you know you're yep. sitting there thinking, and the boss is, "What are you doing?" I, I know. My best, the best <laughs> software person that ever worked for me. Yeah. This guy Fred. He would, he would drive you crazy. He spent almost every day sitting back in his desk chair with his feet up on the desk looking at the ceiling. And it took me a long time to learn that he was designing the software. He and was, after that, yes. he was like yes. Mozart. Just typed yeah. it and it worked. Bang. Yeah, just like yep. Mozart. Yep. Because um, he got it all figured in his head. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, most of mm. every day he was st staring at the ceiling and uh, doing nothing that looked productive. Yep. But everyone works, you know, in a different in, in way. Different, and, and in different ways. That's the problem in a big company is that... Uh, boss, you're supposed to be cut from the same cookie cutter mold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, we're all different. Yeah. Us engineers. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. Well, Dan, this has been awesome. Thank you very much. This is a ton much. of fun, man. I really appreciate uh, you awesome. inviting me over. And I don't want to take too much of your time because oh, you're, you. you're on holidays. I appreciate the holiday is important. spending the time well. dropping by. Where can people catch you? You've got a YouTube channel. You've got the Embedded Muse the newsletter. Embedded news, you go to ganzel.com. Sign up. Email Sign up for the news. You newsletter. don't spam them for anything else. I just don't spam any. No spamming. Right. We spam people with information. I, I try very hard <laughs> to give really good technical yep. information. And yep. I get every day email from some vendor who wants me to promote some uh, product. Uh, right. You get the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, sure. I get the same yeah. thing every day. It's it's like these PR people are, yeah. you know, they don't yeah. think. Embedded yeah. news, newsletter and um, buy your books. I'll link in your books. Okay. Fantastic. I, I appreciate it. Thanks, mate. Okay. See Enjoy. ya.